Wait, hold on. Let me explain. I've got a problem. A couple months ago, I made a sorting system for my LEGO and it's been working great for me. But recently, I uncovered a box full of old LEGO parts I didn't know I had. Sorting LEGO can be very relaxing. Just put on some headphones, turn on your favorite show and get sorting. But it also takes a ton of time. And that's exactly what I don't have. So today I'm attempting to make that sorting process a whole lot easier and hopefully saving me hours of going through these parts myself. And thanks to Extool for sponsoring my laziness. Here we go. The biggest question you might have is how in the world are you going to make sorting LEGO easy? Ideally, I'd have a fully automated system that I can just dump a bunch of LEGO in and it sorts it without me doing anything. I'd need some kind of conveyor belt with cameras, AI, a bunch of motors and probably a lot of space. So the next best thing I can come up with is something that automates a part of the process. As a kid, I used to help out my granddad with his vending machine business. We'd go out to the machines, take out all the coins, put new products back in, and then at the end of the day, we'd pour all of the coins we collected in a coin sorter. The idea of that is very simple. You put the coins into the machine, turn it on, and because all the coins have different sizes, everything rolls down into the correct slot. In theory, that would work for LEGO too. But there are hundreds of different sized LEGO parts and it would be virtually impossible to cater to every single one of them. And then there's the fact that some parts would be able to fit in the slots one way, but not the other. Triangle. That's right, a square hole. <laughs> so that idea is also off the table. But then what are we going with? We're going with an idea that you might be familiar with. A sifter. You know, one of those things that you also use in the kitchen? Basically, we need a box with different layers. Each layer will have holes in them to let a specific size of Lego through. The holes get smaller along the way. So, if you dump in a bunch of Lego, the bigger parts stay at the top and the smaller parts fall through. The more layers you add, the more precise you can sort your parts. Sounds easy enough, right? Now that we have an idea, we need a design. I want this thing to look nice. Instead of it just being a wooden box, it needs to look like a nice piece in the studio. In my older videos, I used the same bin of red parts so much that people started to recognize me as the guy with all the red parts. So what would be better for this project than a little throwback and make the sorter look like a red 2x2 brick? To actually make it look like a 2x2 though, we need to keep in mind that the brick has a specific size. It's 16x16 16 mm and it's about 9.5mm tall. This means we only have room for a set number of layers until the sorter starts to look out of proportion. I wanted to have at least three layers. So let's start with that and see if we can add more later. Lastly, this solution still involves manually shaking the sorter to get all the parts through. And I want to be able to take my hands off of it. Therefore, we need to automate the shaking with some kind of motor. We have to ensure the shaking motion is just right though. If it's too gentle, the bricks won't move through the holes. And if it's too vigorous, the bricks could get damaged or the whole thing might even fall apart. To hide all the electronics, we'll be using the studs on top of the brick. One of them can house the motor, another one will hold the batteries, and we'll hide the switch in a third. Okay, now that we have an idea of how we want to do this, let's start building our sorter. I have some power tools, but I feel like this project requires a bit more precision. Luckily, our friends from Xtool were kind enough to send us their S1 enclosed diode laser cutter. It's the world's first 40 watt laser in this form factor and it can cut and engrave a variety of different materials including cardboard, wood, acrylic and metal. So it's perfect to cut out the parts for our brick sorter. It comes with a smart air assist, a honeycomb panel and some materials to test the laser with. With the first link in the description you can find more about the different machines Extool has to offer. They have great options for every project and budget. And if you use the discount codes on the screen right now you'll get 80 euros off for orders over 9.99 and 100 euros off for orders over 22.99. Okay, after a quick and easy install, the S1 is ready to go. But before I start cutting, I need to figure out how to get my drawing into this laser cutter. If I just scan my drawing from earlier and send it to the machine, I end up with this. That's obviously not what I want. So we need to get a little bit more technical. Back in college, I studied industrial design. There I learned how to use CAD software, like SolidWorks. But that's been a while. However, Xtool has free software you can download from their website. It's simple to use and you even get access to over 300 material presets. These take the guesswork out of how much power and speed you need for cutting and engraving. There are also a ton of tutorials available, so it's super easy to get started. 
One thing I learned from my industrial design courses is the importance of prototyping. It's always a good idea to test your designs on cheaper materials before committing to the final build. This way, you can catch any mistakes or necessary adjustments early on. That's why I'm doing this with cardboard. Literally anyone will have some spare cardboard laying around, so it's basically free. Unless you actually recycle frequently and need to take a trip to some Swedish furniture store where you spend way too much money on more storage and try to justify it by saying you need cardboard for your little sorter project. Anyways, this laser easily cuts through the cardboard with the 40 watt laser head. But if you need to cut or engrave specific materials, there are three more laser heads available and they're all interchangeable with this machine. As long as your projects aren't bigger than about 50 by 30 centimeters, you can pretty much cut or engrave almost anything. And although cardboard is flammable, the S1 is enclosed and it has an emergency shutoff button. With the prototype cutout, we can assemble it and see if our idea works. I'm using hot glue to put everything together. It's a cheap way to assemble things quickly. It won't hold your prototype together super well, but it's sufficient to run some tests. Okay, apparently I'm an idiot. I was so focused on efficiently cutting everything on the S1 that I didn't realize this is not going to work. As you can see, the different layers don't stack the way they should. So I'm making some changes to the prototype and then we can test it out. This is a lot better. They actually stack now. Time to run some tests. I'm not integrating the electronics just yet. I first need to see if the holes are the right size. From what I can see, it works. Now I need to figure out these electronics. With a motor and some weights, we can create an irregular movement that will shake the entire thing. From the outside, the sorter has to look like a standard 2x2 brick, until you actually open it. The plan was to make the studs on top hollow, so we could put the motor, battery and the on-off switch in there. But I don't think that's all going to fit. So what I'll do instead is just mount everything underneath the lid. The switch, however, can be put in one of the studs, so it's hidden unless you know it's there. With the electronics installed, we can test if the motor actually shakes the whole thing. It seems to work pretty well. It does look like we need to let it run for a little longer to get a better result. But I think we can continue with the wooden version. I'm using 6mm poplar plywood. The poplar is great because it's lightweight and sturdy, making it ideal for this kind of project. It's important to use materials specifically designed for laser cutting though. Regular hardware store plywood usually contains toxic glues that you wouldn't want to put in your laser cutter. On their website, Extool actually offers a whole range of materials too, and they're 100% laser compatible. With everything cut out, it's time for assembly. Normally, you would use wood glue and clamps, because that makes the strongest connection. The downside is, that takes a while to dry. I don't have time to sit around and watch glue dry, so I'm just using super glue and a nail gun. And in case you were wondering where the second pair of hands came from, I'm a bit scared of nail guns, so I'm letting my friend do this. With my clumsiness, I would probably be attached to the sorter forever. And that's the last one done. Now we need to do the top. This one's a bit different than the rest, because we're going to hide the electronics in it. For the motor, I cut out this bracket. It holds the motor pretty well, and I hope it'll be sufficient with all the shaking it's gonna do. We'll attach the battery box with double-sided tape, so we still have access to the battery compartment. Now, for the switch, we're gonna hide that in the studs. To attach the switch to the wood, I 3D printed a little adapter thingy that we can screw in. This will hold it well and make sure we can actually press the button. Okay, let's pour some Lego in and test it to see if it holds up. Hold on, we're forgetting something. I wanted this to look like a red brick, but this is still a wooden box. It needs some paint. We started with regular primer from a spray can, but soon found out this wasn't a great idea. Let me just say, our lungs weren't a fan of doing it this way. <coughs> I suggest you also don't try using spray cans indoors. Unless, of course, you don't like breathing. <coughs> we still couldn't help ourselves but try the red paint we bought specifically for this project. 
that was even worse though. So we actually did the smart thing and decided to do it the old fashioned way, with some paint and brushes. After this it looked a lot better, and our lungs were very thankful. But there's still one more thing missing. Lego bricks always have a small Lego logo on top of the studs. I also want that. So I cut some extra circles, painted them, and put them back in the laser cutter. The S1's pinpoint positioning system is the most accurate positioning method for desktop lasers like this, and it makes centering our logo super easy. After quickly attaching the studs, we're done! There it is, the Lego brick sorta of brick. Pour on your Lego, press the switch, and you can just walk away. If you're interested in trying out one of Xtool's machines to make these kind of projects for yourself, be sure to click the link down below and don't forget to use the discount codes during checkup.